Hello everyone, welcome to Step Dancer Yoga. I'm super excited to practice with you today. Um, for this session, I thought what I'd do is take you through a series of poses from a class that I actually taught last week um, through my online studio. And what's kind of neat, I think, about this sequence is that I chose one pose, Salabhasan, and I took that shape as inspiration. And I kind of, you know, weaved it through a collection of poses. And I think that's a really interesting way to practice. And if you're looking for tips or ideas of sort of how to string poses together, it's, um, it's a technique, you know, it's a technique that you can use. So I thought I would share that with you. Um, it's a good little mini practice in and of itself. So I hope you enjoy. And uh, just a reminder, if you haven't yet already and you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe, show your support. It would really mean a lot. And um, yeah, okay, let's get to it. Okay, so collect for yourself a blanket, two bricks and a strap. The bricks and strap can just be off to the side to begin with. And then lay a thin blanket um, down on the mat and then lay on your abdomen. Okay, and you're just gonna position yourself over this blanket so that, I mean, it's partly just to soften the pelvic bones there, you know, against the floor so it doesn't feel uncomfortable. I also find that I use this uh, blanket to fill the lumbar spine a little bit because sometimes, for those folks who have some lower back pain, sometimes lying on the abdomen can be a bit, um, tough, right? So if you, if you feel that, then you can kind of use it in the same way. So this area here being the lumbar spine, um, you just kind of want to place it underneath there so it feels full, okay? And then be here for a moment, and then let's make a few adjustments here, okay? So now raise your right leg just a little bit off the floor, and vigorously turn the back of the leg open. So from the tailbone to the outer hip here, broaden the buttock, flare the back of the thigh open, reach into the toes, and then lay the leg back down a little further than where it was before. Okay, and then do the same with the other. Lift the leg up just a little, broaden the back of the thigh, extend, and then lower the leg down. Okay, so you're just creating nice space in there. And if you look at my toes, you'll see they're probably turning in a little bit, which is just an extra protection I take to make sure that the low back feels spacious. Okay, and then you're gonna rest your hands for a moment on your, your head on your hands here, like this, and breathe. Okay, just become comfortable and familiar with this shape, with this position. All right, now extend your left arm straight forward. You can have your other head on your, your head on your other hand. And you're gonna crawl your left fingers forward, 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 forward. Okay, now you're gonna simultaneously raise your right leg up and your left arm up. Okay, ready? Raise the leg up, raise the arm up, Broaden the back of the lifted leg, broaden the buttock, broaden the thigh, and then reach the arm forward. You can just look a little bit forward. And then lower the leg down, lower the head down, arm down. Okay, change sides. Head down, arm forward. And now again, simultaneously, raise the arm, raise the leg, broaden the back of the leg. And what you're trying to do here is still keep the pelvis level. So as you raise that leg up, don't distort the pelvis. Okay, reach your arm forward, extend into that lifted leg. And then release and rest. Breathe. Okay, so what I mean here is that when you're raising one leg up, you're not letting this happen. You wanna imagine that there's almost like a string attached to the inner part of the leg and someone's trying to lift from there, lift from there, lift from there without letting this happen, right? Lift the leg, lift the leg, lift from the inner leg and then down. Okay, try that again. Do the right side and then do the left side. 
just lift it up, broaden, 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 reach from the inner groin to the inner heel, extend, extend, raise the leg up, inner thigh up, 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 and then down, and rest. Okay, one more time, let's do it opposite arm, opposite leg, and we're just starting to like, you know, wake up those spinal muscles, right, those little muscles all along the spine. Okay, so extend, we'll do one at a time, and then again lift. Lift the leg, lift the arm, reach, reach, reach. You can look a little forward and extend. And then down, and again rest. Okay, second side, last time here. Raise the leg, raise the arm, extend in two directions. From your inner left groin to your inner heel, reach, 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 make that leg longer and extend into your fingers also. Remember, feel how your pelvis is touching the blanket, the floor, keep yourself even. Raise the inner thigh, inner thigh up, inner thigh up. And then release and rest. Okay, so now stage next. Now take two bricks and have them behind you, behind you, beside you, okay, like so. And you can sort of work out for yourself what height you think is kind of reasonable. I think we'll go with flat bricks here like this. Make those same adjustments. So lift one leg, broaden, lift, broaden. Okay, and now what you're gonna do is slide your fingernails along the bricks and lift your chest and down. Okay, now so much happens at the same time here in these poses, but that buttocks broadens, the mid buttock has to cut in, and then while you're doing that, the feet are pressing down right now, and then slide, 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 and literally peel yourself up. Peel yourself up, and then come down. Okay, give it another go. If you feel you've lost anything in your legs, just quickly readjust. Broaden the back thighs, broaden the buttocks. Some of you, if you've got that deep lumbar curve like I do, I often find I just take my hand under the abdomen, give it a little scoop up, right? And that's gonna also help. All right, and then again. Raise your eyes, slide your fingers away, and lift your chest. Roll your shoulders back, fingernails away. Keep going, keep going. Chest forward, chest up, fingers back. And then release. Okay, take your hands underneath your head and pause here. Okay. Now, we'll put it all together. So we'll put it together towards the final presentation of the pose. And I'm gonna suggest here that you use a, a strap around your feet. Okay, and you can place the strap around your arches. Okay, like that, just so you have something to hit out against. Let's see here, we'll move this out of the way. <laughs> okay. And then again, position yourself. Here like this. Okay, so hit out against the belt and raise the legs up. Okay, that's stage one. Stage two, you're gonna raise the chest up by moving the arms away. Now this is, um, by confession, a really challenging pose for me, so my legs don't lift up as high as I would like them to. But that's not to say there's not good work happening, right? So see what it's like for you, but please do know that ideally you're aiming to get the thighs off the ground here, okay? All right, Salabhasan, hit out against the belt, turn the front of the thighs in, and then raise the legs up. Slide your fingers away from you and chest up. Hit out, lift the legs, move back, move back, chest up. And then release. One more go here, hit out against the strap, raise the legs, slide your fingers, peel yourself up. Mid buttock down, thighs up. Raise those legs higher, broaden, broaden, slide the fingers away, chest up more, and then release. Okay. 
and that's celibacin. <laughs> okay, before we move on, I thought I would show you, just from Light on Yoga, the celibacin here. Okay, just so that you can see the shape of the pose here. Let's see if we can get it in focus. <laughs> Okay, so that shape, right? You see how the chest is lifted? Let's see if I can point. <laughs> you see how the chest is lifted and then the legs also go up. So there's like this arc, right? Can you, you can see that, huh? Okay, so that's the shape that we're now going to bring into some of the other poses in today's practice. So we're gonna do Ardha Chandrasan. Um, next, but we're going to do it in a very particular way. So first, just as a reminder, Ardha Chandrasan, what it looks like. You can come down into Uttanasana, hand can be on a brick or on the floor, and then you're going to stand on one leg and open yourself up. Okay, this is, you know, the classical shape of Ardha Chandrasana. Okay, but we're going to do it a little different. So how we're going to do it is gonna be at the wall. You're gonna do it facing the wall, okay? So um, let's do it first where your, your right side of the body is gonna be near the wall. You're gonna stand on your left leg, okay? And then again, you're gonna come down into your Ardha Chandrasana position, but your right hand is up on the wall, okay? So you, you know it's easier to balance here. And now you need to insert Salabhasan. So this lifted foot here, you wanna press it back, back. You wanna create that thigh, that feeling on the front of your thigh there, like you had in the Salabhasan. And then move your mid buttock into the body, right? This hip sucks in and mid buttock into the body. Thigh back, okay? Now you may find your head is coming to the wall. So you have to resist there also. Take the head back and the leg back. Leg back, head back, buttock in, and find Salabhasan here in this Ardha Chandrasan. And then release, okay? So it's interesting, it's not, you know, a lot of times Ardha Chandrasan, it's about the balance. This one is not so much about the balance, but it gives you a chance to um, you know, explore some of those actions a little bit and hopefully translate, I hope it's obvious, you can see the similarity, what I'm going for here in terms of the Salabhasan actions. Okay, so now second side, this time, the left side of your body is close to the wall. You're gonna stand on your right leg, come forward, left hand stays on the wall, right hand is on the floor here, and then turn yourself to the left for Ardha Chandrasan. Okay, now translating Salabhasan. Shift that lifted leg back, back, back. Move the mid buttock and outer hip into the body. And now also take the head back. You can lift the chin up a little. Head back, leg back. Head back, leg back. Okay, make sure you're standing straight on your standing leg. You're not kind of like leaning forward or too far back, but standing upright. Okay, lifted leg back, head back, chest open. Find Salabhasan here in this Ardha Chandrasan. Okay, and then release. Bring yourself to standing, Tadasan. Next we have Virbhadrasan three. And same idea, translate the lesson of Salabhasan into a variation of Virbhadrasan three. Okay, so again, come forward as if you were gonna do Uttanasana, and you can use high bricks here. Okay, roll your shoulders away from your neck, chin and chest forward, just concave your back. Okay, now stand tall in your hips, lift these corners, shift your weight onto your right leg, and then raise your left leg up. And now as you're lifting this leg, like as soon as it leaves the floor, Think Salabhasan. So remember the shape of the foot and that extreme broadening, right? The broadening of the buttock, the broadening of the back of the thigh. And can you maintain that, maintain that, maintain that, and lift the leg as high as you can. You wanna pretend like there's a floor underneath the front of your thigh, broaden the back thigh, raise the leg higher, keeping the pelvis level. Chin forward, chest forward, raise the leg higher. And then release. Lower down, Ardha Uttanasan, chin forward, chest forward. Okay, now shift your weight onto your left leg, 
stand tall in that hip, right? The standing leg hip has to resist. And then slowly raise your right leg up. As soon as it lifts from the floor, broaden. Broaden your buttock away from the tailbone. Broaden the back of the thigh. And from the inner leg, lift, 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 lift. Okay, inner leg more than the outer leg. So again, you're not letting any distortion come. Lift from the inner leg, reach the inner line of the leg away and up, away and up, and then counter that. Chin forward, chest forward. Virabhadrasana three, thinking, translating, celibus in action. And then release. Lower your leg down. And then stand yourself back up. Tadasana. Okay, let's do that one more time. This time without the bricks, but instead using the wall and using your hands really high. So you can again start to get like that um, arc, that shape that I showed you when I showed you the photo from Light on Yoga. Okay, so have your hands really high, fairly high on the wall. So the armpits, you know, are, are open and then reach your hips back, okay? So you're already getting that shape in the chest. Okay? You can look a little forward. Now again, transfer the weight. Let's go first onto the right leg and raise your left leg up, keeping that broadening. So look at the shape of my foot, broaden the buttock, broaden the back of your thigh, reach away, push the wall, chin forward, chest forward, leg higher, chest open. Virabhadrasana three, think Salabhasana. And then release. Okay, recover yourself, Ardha Uttanasana. Transfer the weight onto your left leg and now raise your right leg up. Okay, suck the left outer hip in and then broaden the lifted leg. Broaden the buttock away from the tailbone. Broaden that lifted thigh, raise the leg higher, reach into it. Push the wall with your fingertips. Chin forward, chest forward, leg higher. Inner leg, don't let that outer hip lift. Broaden it, broaden it, L raise it up more. Inner leg up. And then release. Reach your hips back, recover in this Uttanasana. And then release, bend your knees, walk forward, and stand in Tadasana. I've got one more for you to play with, to explore this celibus in action. Okay, it's um, a variation of Mayurasan. So for this, you'll need the chair and um, maybe a blanket or a second mat, something maybe just to soften this rail a little bit. Okay, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna stand in front of the chair and just where you hinge, right? Right where you hinge, you're gonna lay that part over the chair here like this, and then if you watch my hands here, I'm gonna take your hands, turn them back, so the fingers go back. Okay, so again, I'm coming like this. You see my fingers? Here, I take the fingers back, I draw the elbows in towards the navel almost, and then I raise the legs up, and you kinda of just float. But these are the Salabhasan legs. Broaden the back of the thighs, right? Turn them out. And now can you see how my head is kind of going down? So can you get both actions? Thighs up, chest up. Thighs up, chest up. Stay with the elbows bent, but lift your chest up. Lift the legs higher, lift the chest higher. And be here. It's pretty fun. <laughs> it's pretty fun and it's a great pose. And work those legs and then come down. Okay, now if the wrists are a little bit cranky and taking the hands back, you know, that's towards the classical positioning for Mayurasan, if that's too much for today, then try holding maybe the sides of the chair, okay? And that will likely release a little bit of pressure on the wrists. Okay, still draw the elbows in. Lift the legs, lift the chest. Okay, elbows are bent. Legs up, chest up. And try that. Okay, do it once, hold it for a bit, then rest, do it again. Okay, last go. Give it one more go, one more go. Okay, pick your hand position, come forward. 
Draw the elbows in, squeeze them in, and then lift those legs up. Push one leg against the other, so legs together. And then lift the legs higher from the inner thigh. Inner thigh, inner groin, lift up. And then chest up, chest up, legs up, chest up, legs up. And then release. Okay, like I feel, I feel some muscles, just some stuff happening down in there. It's hard to access in some other poses. So I do find that all these different variations kind of get at that part of the spine in a unique, relatively unique way. But um, see how it lands for you. Okay, so that's the main practice. That's, that's what I've got for you today. But I'd like to end and just settle you a little bit. Okay, so let's end in a Viparita Karani in a variation here. And this particular setup, I mean, if you have a setup that you know you like, please go ahead, just take it. Um, but this setup that I'm showing here is like this. I've got a bolster and then my bolster is not very long, right? So I made it longer by adding a rolled blanket in front of it, you know, to make more depth. And then I put a couple bricks here too. Again, depending on the length of your torso so the buttock doesn't hang over. So it's just gonna be a little lift there. And then I've you know, put a blanket over top here to make it kind of have that waterfall effect. Oh, excuse me. Okay, we've got the chair and then I put a little blanket on top of the chair. To get into this, I'll just show going in this way. You're just gonna go from the side and then you're going to sort of swing yourself over. Okay, so I'm a bit distorted now. I just need to work myself in so that I'm straight and my shoulders are on the ground, right? The top of my shoulders, I'm trying to roll top of the shoulders down. So it's almost, it's in the shoulder stand family, right? You wanna think about it like that. And then you can adjust the distance of the chair so that your lower legs are supported here, like so. Okay, so you've got this nice chest opening. The abdomen is soft. You can release your arms to your side and just be here. Okay, I find this position to be nice and calming and I think it should just settle you after some of those back bends. Okay, back bends can be exhilarating, right? So you want to, Give yourself a few minutes and just let yourself settle, kind of recompose, you know, consolidate and collect yourself back together. <laughs> okay, please stay however long you feel you need to just, like I said, reset, reset everything, recharge yourself. Um, yeah. Oh, before I go, I should mention that this practice that we just did was essentially a clip from a full class. And so the name of the class is Salabasan and Beyond. And it's an hour and a half class that I taught on April 22nd. Um, and it's available in the Poe Library, the Studio Poe Library. So if you were intrigued by this practice and would like to see sort of the full context for it and uh, kind of where we can go with it in a full hour and a half, then please uh, visit my website, go to studiopoyoga.com and uh, check out your options there. Okay, we do have a day pass if you're interested in just looking around the library and doing some recorded sessions. Okay, of course I would love to see any of you in our live stream classes as well. And if that's something that you might be interested in, um, you might wanna consider a membership. Okay, feel free to reach out to me if you have questions or, um, and or visit the website. I'll put all of the details in the links below. Okay, thanks a lot.